Hey, I'm Luke Pell, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. It only felt right to listen to the Walls album on my way here yeah. from a band called Kings of Leon. Yeah. Uh, okay. What is it about Kings of Leon that you have in common with them? I mean, you're uh, a fan of them, right? Yeah, so they're in Tennessee, okay. and they're from, they're from Tennessee as well. Um, but, yeah, they're, uh, they're great guys. Yeah. yeah, I love those guys. Yeah, I just felt right to hear it on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Why did it feel so right? I've seen you post about them maybe okay. once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I figured not only were, have you, are you a fan, but I figured maybe there's some kind of connection there. Yeah, no, I, uh, I've actually never met them. Um, yeah. I'm just a fan of their music, man, and, uh, you know, seen them play and, and love what they do. I mean, I had, that's like, if you had the question, I was like, what's the last thing you played in your iPod? I literally was playing that last night, some, <laughs> some back down south. So, love those guys, nice. but, yeah. It's, it's awesome how music has no borders. You can be a country artist and listen to hip hop yeah. or listen to rock or listen to something yeah. different. Um, I love that about music. Yeah, I'm the same way, man. It's what's so cool about country music right now. And my favorite part about it is, is all the collaborations that people are able to do. Because, you know, our generation, we grew up in the iPod generation where you literally have, you know, 2 chains, and then you'll have like Merle Haggard, you know, right. and they, comes, they come back to back. And it's like, so you've got such a weird mix in your head. Um, but now as artists, we're able to kind of put that together and our influences come out and we have this really unique um, split direction that country music is going. So right. it's awesome. And, and how does listening to different styles of music um, affect you in any way with whenever you're, you know, creating your own material? Yeah, the, you know, there's so many. I, I love the um, creativity that comes out of a three way co-write, you know, and that's what's popular. Uh, as far as a method of, of writing in Nashville, is, is we get together, there'll be, like just this past week, I, you know, I wrote with a guy named uh, Michael White, okay. uh, who he wrote uh, his uh, number one for Michael Ray last year, wow. uh, Kiss You in the Morning. Uh, but Michael White was a 90s country artist yeah. himself. And so, you know, he brings in the 90s country artist kind of vibe sometimes right. and the emotion. And then, um, you know, I wrote with a, a, the other guy we had is a guy named Michael Lawton, who he's more of a pop guy who builds a kind of a track and a melody that's more uh, in the pop world. And so we mix those two things together and then bring in my influences and it just makes a really cool vibe. So that, that's what I love about Nashville and the writing process there. Right. And there's, there's a lot of great musicians in Nashville, not just yeah. for country. Yeah, absolutely. There's more and more pop um, influences coming into Nashville, um, not just through the sound, but physically people moving to Nashville. There's a lot of guys. I've got some buddies that, um, you know, they're pop producers and, sound, and engineers, mix engineers that live in L.A. And uh, they travel like every month they come to Nashville for a week or two and they'll write with artists in Nashville. Right. And so um, it's really cool. Justin Timberlake's got a place out in Franklin, Tennessee now. Nice. And so it's like it's uh, it's interesting to see those two worlds coming together. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, and jumping into your music, you've released two singles so far. Yeah. Um, tell me about your writing process, uh, yeah. whether you're with with a co-writer or you're by yourself. How does that really work out for you? Yeah, you know, I just. I, I love the writing process and that it can be real like you when you're digging in the writing room by yourself or with other writers um, you'll sit there and it's kind of this meditation you know thing that that's being spoken about and you're kind of opening up and being vulnerable about the emotions that are inside of you you know you, you get really in touch with who you are as a person and what your background challenges things that you've been through heartbreak right. um, falling in love just you know you know falling down and getting back up in life and so all those things start to come out and they come onto the onto the paper and into the song and uh, it kind of gives them life and then other people can relate to it and that's that's what's so cool about country music is it's got so much depth to it you know and so I, I love it I, I've heard artists say uh, when writing country music you it's it's when you're most vulnerable yeah. um, as opposed to when you're writing pop or hip-hop yeah. you're, you're not as vulnerable right. um, have you ever had any issues be uh, writing down your your songs like saying like I don't know if I want the world to hear this part of me like yeah no absolutely I think over time the more I write the more comfortable I get you know being vulnerable and putting uh, tough parts of my life uh, onto the page and into public, um, the more that comes out and the deeper subject matter that I'm able to face and to discuss, you know, and I, I think that's the, the beautiful thing about country lyrics and, and being a country artist, you know, so. And with the music right now, the two singles that you released, are they, are they for an upcoming EP, a debut album? Like what is in the works for you right now? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so, we, you know, we live in a world of, of releasing singles. And right. so um, that, that's kind of what our technique and our method is. 
um, throughout this year is we are just periodically putting out singles, um, you know, taking the feedback, seeing how they do, mm -hmm. um, adding them to our live show. Um, and then, you know, as, as 2018 rolls around and, and we look to do, you know, bigger projects, um, you know, then we'll look at more extended of doing a full album and that type of thing. But uh, for this year, yeah, we're just releasing singles every every six weeks or every couple months. So now the the guys that you've written with so far, or the team behind your track so far, yeah. um, how did you really come about to working with them? Is it people that you've been wanting to work with? Is it just you know relationships yeah. that just happen naturally in the music industry? Yeah. So um, there's a couple different um, you know connections there. Uh, you know, the guy that is, has been my producer for the first two songs that we put out this year, his name is Brandon Kinney. He's a great songwriter. He wrote um, Going Out With My Boots On for Randy Hauser okay. um, back in 2009. Um, he's had a lot of other Luke Bryan uh, cuts and uh, Justin Moore and, and Willie Nelson, different people. Um, so I wrote with him, and this is my latest single that we have out. It's called Best Thing You've Ever Done. So I've, I've got Brandon as my producer. He's like a big brother to me in Nashville. And then the other guy is a guy named Jaron Boyer, who also wrote Somewhere on a Beach. Uh, he's, written, uh, he, he's written... Um, Jason Aldean's They Don't Know uh, single that's out right now and, and a bunch of other Jason Aldean songs. So those two guys came together and myself and uh, we wrote this song, song called Best Thing You've Ever Done and I, I love it and uh, it's just it's just a great creative vibe that we were able to work together. We all actually are with the same publishing company in Nashville with okay. Pure Music and so um, all our writing is underneath that umbrella. So. so these two singles that have dropped so far, why, why were they the ones that you wanted? Um, the music fans to really get to you know to be like oh this is the introduction yeah. of Luke yeah absolutely you know the first one we put out in January is called pretty close and um, you know a lot of people don't know uh, the story behind it um, was like we were talking about earlier one of those very vulnerable pieces of my life mm -hmm. um, the song if you take it as, as face value is is kind of the the classic country uh, you know the simple things in life content of you know just you know you're happy just out with somebody you love you know and and in a simple situation but for me uh it was about a, a near-death experience i almost had and you know i found that being around the people that you love in your life and your relationships are sometimes the most important things in your life mm -hmm. and nothing else matters at that point and uh so that that was the, kind of the underlying uh you know inspiration for that song um, and then the second one, Best Thing You've Ever Done, was one that was actually, and a lot of the fans love this one because it was about what they've known of me last year being on a reality TV show right. and going through a relationship and being broken up with on national TV. Mm -hmm. And I got to write a song about it. And it's just about moving on and, and, and dealing with, you know, relationships don't always work out and everything happens for a reason. So. Right. Yeah. I'm glad you kind of touched base on the reality TV. I don't want to talk about it too much, but yeah. I, love, I love like when fans um, are like, oh, I didn't know he was a singer. Yeah, yeah. I don't know he. I don't know he. He has you know music out. Right. So that's kind of cool that I mean music has been, you've 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 had music in your life yeah. even before this. So it's kind of yeah. cool that people are because of the show are finding out stuff like that. Yeah, it really is. You know, it's interesting. Um, I was known on the show uh, about my military background, mm -hmm. and uh, I did spend nine years in the military. And that was a big part of my life, big part of my twenties. Um, but uh, a few years ago, well before the TV show ever happened, I moved back to Nashville and decided to pursue music as a career. Yeah. And uh, that wasn't really revealed on the show. So now it's been fun, really, um, post um, reality TV, reintroducing myself, right. introducing my music um, to you know all those millions of people that that knew me just from my military background and being on the reality TV show. So um, it, it's I've, it's been really getting a lot of good feedback and it's been really cool people are like oh my gosh i had no clue that you yeah. know you were a country artist that stuff. must be a good feeling though that people are you know became fans of the show yeah. and then are all of a sudden like wow i love your music yeah absolutely they're embracing it so much and uh they're coming out to the shows and singing my songs back to me and i'm just getting so so many great just uh compliments and support from you know all the fans that you know they just met me on the tv show but then they've found my music since then and 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 they're loving it so that's great and the music's been able to get you on tour you've been on tour yeah. for quite some time already right yeah we we've, we've been uh you know we play eight or ten uh shows eight or ten dates a month right now and uh right. we've got a big tour coming up this winter uh with some other artists out of nashville um and and we're excited about that it's going to be a coast to coast uh, about 30 date tour and uh so we're really excited to announce that we haven't announced it yet officially and who it's going to be with but all those details yeah. are coming soon so now what's it like being on tour with i mean you technically you only have two singles out yeah so what's it like being on tour with those two singles out? You're testing out a lot of new music. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, we, uh, we, we'll play those singles for folks, and they know those. They can relate to those. They've heard them before. 
the show. Um, but then we get to play a lot of stuff that's not released yet, you know, and, and original music and, and, and see how the fans in the live shows connect with that. And so it's really cool. And that kind of also helps us guide, you know, deciding what, what the best fit for us is to put on our next project and, okay. and to release is how's it going live and, and you know, and, and how, how do the fans like it and right. connect with it. So it's been fun. Now, as, you, as you're performing these songs live, um, does it make you change the way that you think about when you go in the studio? Like, oh, maybe we should record this track this way, or maybe we should yeah. try the guitar that way. Yeah, hey, absolutely. Um, you know, the live show, just that experience um, helps so much mold uh, you as an artist and understanding, you know, how, how your fans see you, how, how you can relate to your fans, what music works best for you, what, you know, uh, it, it just kind of has this full circle moment which just gives you the best sense of who you are as an artist and what, what songs most resonate with, with the, you know, the image that you're portraying. Now, what's been the biggest challenge for you as a country artist? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge has also been the biggest um, you know, reward in that you know, there's millions of people that saw me as a reality TV star last year, which has been great. There's a lot of those people that have really embraced the music side of me as well. But there are, are some people, too, that... Um, you know, we, have, we literally have like 97% women that come to our shows and, and, you know, like some of my, a lot of my content and my background is very like kind of Eric Church, Dirks Bentley, a lot of like guys, guy, I can drink a beer with you kind of stuff. And guys are kind of like, I feel like they, they think it's like a magic mic show or something if they're going to come sometimes. So they're like a little scared, they're a little apprehensive about coming to our shows. I'm like, Hey guys, you know, there's 97% single women there. Yeah. So it's kind of like ladies night on steroids. That's and uh, so they're just, it's funny when groups of guys figure that out or like we've had some fraternity groups and stuff at organiz at uh, universities hire us to come in because they figured it out. They're like, Oh my gosh, you hiring a guy from the bachelorette to come sing country music. He's like, it's going to bring all the girls in. So it's, it's funny how it works. Yeah.